I'm losing interest in Reddit as well, Woody. Yeah. Like it's just like I I don't go as deep as you guys. Like so if Woody's getting tired of it, I you know, you've seen ten times as much as I have. One that I do like recently as I've been going to the R slash survival and like reading stuff about like hobby. people. Yeah, I, I ordered a book off of Amazon. Uh let me see what it was. I can check. I ordered a book off of Amazon about like survival techniques. And I figured like I don't have time to go camping all the time. But a lot of this <laughs> is like just little techniques that you can do like in your own backyard to like get quick with a fire starter or like figure like a fire pit out or like do something like that. I mean this like, in I, the nicest way possible. I hope your car gets stuck in a blizzard someday. I think you'd <laughs> like it. <laughs> and I, I have the, I have all my stuff there. Where it's like, oh no. <laughs> it just so happens that my knife has a fire starter built into the hammer on the tail end of it. This is what I trained for. Yeah. Can it's we like, just oh. walk to that IHOP? <laughs> Yeah. No, no, we have to build a fire and hunt for rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? Like, the survival right show there. is super interesting. Like, I, I love watching it. Like, I've watched the whole, you know, primitive technology or whatever, and there's like a million spinoffs of that now. By spinoff, I don't mean worse. Some of them are better. Like, yeah. like they're, they're very good. But I've been watching more like modern day stuff. Like, because I'm, if they, if you, if I watch those videos and like read shit for the rest of my life and then you throw me in the Sahara, I'm dead. Like it doesn't matter how many fucking beer girls things I watched. I have faith I in you. I might die slowly, but I'm watching the ones where the people have like state of the art or like at least modern day gear, and they're kind of like, now what you want to do here? Make sure you hammer this post in further than you would think because you wouldn't think about it, but this creates torque when you're building the table here or whatever the whatever the fuck it is. And so I don't know. It's like one of those things. They talk where in these videos. They do. They explain it. It's like in, it's mm. always sunny where uh, they interview that old woman and they're like. Well, on off days, I like to read cookbooks. I don't even know how to cook. You know, and she does that. Like, that's what I'm doing. I don't know how to survive in the wild, but I'm having a lot of fun trying to figure it out. You know what I'm like, doing but haven't done yet? I, I don't know how to phrase something I haven't done yet. Sewing. Like, I, I never got into sewing. It was never my thing. I, I always thought it was, like, gay or not for guys. And, and it's an important survival thing, turns Forgive out. me, yeah. I'm old. But that was, like, a thing. Like, if you learned to sew in, like, 1982, you would think that I'll never use this after this class. And and that's where I am. <laughs> what are you, a fag? <laughs> yeah. Learning to sew, be self-sufficient. You know, the, the grid goes down and you're going to be fine. Ah, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I'm Have sorry. you been when, reading my when, mind? <laughs> when, do you need, when do you need to sew? If you're in the wilderness and there are two pieces of of fabric that need to be put together and you've got string and twine and, and <laughs> a knee, you need to be able to sew, Kyle. You need to go back about th three seconds in this <laughs> anecdotal scenario. What are these two fabrics and why do I need them attached to one another? They're essential. Because they're For half so many the size reasons of I a hammock. can't begin to list. It's two halves of a hammock. Why don't I just use my hammock? You don't have that. It's been taken by... I have uh, half a dozen uh, hammocks it's been, it's in been, a rucksack. No, no, no. It's I have cut true. all your it's hammocks been... in half and, and, and given you thread and needles... Yeah, raiders have, have raided, <laughs> and they and they've taken your hammocks and they've stolen your automatic they've sewing machine. They griefed all of my hammocks. Uh -huh. They griefed all your hammocks, and now all you have is a blue tarp and uh, for out of spite, they cut that into four pieces. Oh, no, I can't. I can't make a shelter out of this. There's no. Uh, it won't. You keep have the half a dozen out. hammocks, but banditos have come and stolen half of each of uh -huh. your half yeah. dozen. Couple Trump of, warned me of this. Yeah, a couple <laughs> of bad hombres. <laughs> bad <laughs> hombres came. <laughs> cut all my hammocks up. No, I no, have a couple cool little projects in mind uh, that I'm going to start. We bought a heavy-duty sewing machine. It can do leather. It was only $130. It's cheap. Okay, well, that's cool. See, if you're sewing leather together, that's not a, that's not sewing. That's upholstering. It turns out that like your typical sewing machine that like you know that your wife might have that my wife does have can't even do like some of the heavier <clears throat> canvases and stuff. Like it's really about like the <coughs> shirt that you have on right now, and. Yeah. Uh, so we found a heavy duty sewing machine that just happened to be on super sale. And I had talked to it. It seems like every time I need to sew something, Jackie tells me that her machine can't do that. Woody, did you buy a sewing machine for yourself? Well, it's not arriving for one to three weeks, but yes. You're a faggot. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, so Woody's gay now. If you no, take away the part person. about having sex with men, I'm pretty gay. Dude, oh my I, god, dude. you bought a you're a seamstress. We'll see who's <laughs> laughing when I'm the only one who gets a custom scarf next year. <laughs> uh, yeah, I when the show starts, you're both wearing these horrible, 
<laughs> lopsided oh, that, beans. That would be the funniest thing if we made scarves and you only sell one to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 we've covered just how gay. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I'm, uh, I'm in a, a perpetual state of shopping for paramotor wings, right? I don't buy them all the time, but I'm always looking. And they have these custom color creators. And I come up, like, I, you know, like a little of this, a little of that. What would go good together? What matches? What clashes? What, what's bold? And then in the end, I'm like, yeah, someone's going to see this and think, that chick's cool. <laughs> you know, as I go <laughs> flying by. Because I always land on like pink and black goes so great together. But that's, uh, I guess that's just what I am on Yellow the Yellow and gold would be cool. Well, I like GIF recipes. That's my favorite subreddit because I like learning recipes in a pinch. But do, don't um, you find them dumb to follow? Like aren't text recipes the nicest ones to work with? Ah, uh, well, see, I like to watch the GIF recipe to see everything from beginning to end. But then I go in the comments and it's got the text. Oh, well, that ah, makes a I lot of do sense. That because I've seen those GIF recipes and I've tried one before where I'm like, all right, I need two eggs and then uh, I'll that wait much salt. <laughs> all right, all right. Need to wait for it See? to loop around again. <laughs> Some <laughs> amount, of, Some amount s- of flour. He poured it in. Okay, let's try that. I no, sent it and... twice. Well, many times I've sent a GIF recipe to my wife. Twice she's actually executed on it because it seemed like something she'd like to. And that's exactly how she does it. She's like, all right, I need to roll around. You know, what was yeah. after the eggs? This could be a minute. You know. Yeah, yeah. Go to the comments and it's got the text, like the legit recipe, which I need to follow. You know, I I, I don't. The alternative is terrible. The two best yeah, ones the that I still check up. at least like every other day are nature is fucking lit and nature is metal because Those it's all just to gifts watch. of, of a, they're my favorite. Nature is metal is hard. One, I nature love those ones. Lit is fun. No, it's just animals getting torn apart and eaten. I, no, and nature's like, metal is where they're torn apart, That's describing right? metal. Lit is usually oh, something like cool. Like, for example, I saw an owl fly between two people. So, you know, but he, like, you wouldn't think he even fits, but he puts he like, his, Ooh. yeah, he, Ooh, and he just zooms right through. <laughs> uh, it's pretty Or neat. whatever he sounded like. It was a gif, so I don't know what But, Owls yeah, it, like, nature's fucking lit is is fucking lit you know it's animals doing cool animal shit like mm-hmm. like but nature is metal is nature's metal a is a winner like and a loser in all of those disemboweled and and that's like, what i like about it it's watch real a kitten deal. get munched up oh well, it's, it's real deal animal shit it's what animals do yeah it's the worst things animals do that are hard to look at thank you that's what it is it's the it's animals at their worst metal. yeah it, 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 and it's you know look i get it like it like we were talking earlier about the eagle that kills the goat and i'm like oh you know that's kind of sad because i uh, i no, feel for the goat shit. but he's <laughs> like hey there's baby eaglets we're gonna start <laughs> oh <laughs> caterpillar with wasp eggs hatching out of it. i saw that i saw, I saw that, that. Do, can you link it Even on i the everyone wants I to like, see it you guys are ahead of me <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll link that it. was fucked they're all like wiggling, dude. And and my impression is the caterpillar doesn't die until they like come out, right? I can't tell if it's dead or if it's only moving because of the wriggling of the eggs. Yeah, in caterpillar, it's going. <laughs> that caterpillar, if it's dead, has not been dead very long. There's no decomposition going on. Decomposition. No, going it was a lot. It's he doesn't alive. seem dehydrated. I think he's. I can't tell why he's moving, but he's going to be dying from this little operation. I don't like looking at that, frankly, but it's not as bad as some of the other things. Like, I see fetuses being ripped out of, like, cloven-hoofed beasts. You know what yeah, one of the those worst are, those things are I saw? I saw, I think it was a bunch of monkeys dealing with an alligator. And uh, the alligator got one of the monkey's arms and broke it. And that was it. You just saw his arm laying, like, limp and in a non-arm shape. And you knew that monkey couldn't survive in the wild anymore and just yep. would benefit from a mercy killing. It was yeah. brutal. Like a fat person. <laughs> you know what? Exactly like You know that. what? A lot of those people on The Survivor, like the contestants, they plump up for that show. You may have the they wrong do. strategy, Kyle. First guy, that's that, that was his deal. He came in there. He's like, look at all these skin and bone, ab, six-pack motherfuckers. I'm going for the long haul. Mm-hmm. 30 days from now, we'll see <laughs> who's care. He was carrying like an extra 35 pounds or 40 pounds, what maybe. His and name was Richard something, maybe? It was Richard. Richard didn't pay his taxes and did a year in prison. <laughs> and now I wonder if he exited prison with more or less money than he would have if he had paid his taxes. Because he didn't work for a year. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the worst part about prison. Like, of I course. Eh, you know, free, free room, free board. 
Mm. I don't know if that's the worst part about prison. Yeah, you're right. I, as I'm thinking about it, there's some other things I might not like too. You know what? Uh, you know who would agree with you? That's the worst part about prison. Now, the worst part about prison is you can't go to work. How am I supposed to sell propane and the worst, propane oh, accessories? <laughs> the worst part of prison is you're behind that fence. Oh. Someone else mows the lawn every day. Bobby, like you slap ruined in the, face. the pattern. <laughs> Peggy. Uh, that show is due for a comeback. They keep remaking all these shows and stuff. Fucking bring that back. It's voices. Mike Judge does most of them. I would love if they'd bring King of the Hill back. Yeah, it's only... such a fucking good show. I'm so glad I reintroduced it to my life like eight yeah, months only ago. Only Luann died. Ago. You know? Oh, yeah. The voice of her. And she was never like a crux character anyway. Not like, a big fan you can, of you can, as long as Boomhauer, Bill, and. Uh, the big uh, dozer. But voice actors, the you can swap dozer. them out and get away with a lot. Like, I think, shit, sounds like Taylor could just about do the main one. Let's nah. make our what? own King I of the Hill. You 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 you, you can you can tell like like you can tell. For oh, you sure. can always tell. I you can, can tell. tell like, but if you want the show back, you you say you know what this if works. If I spend if I spend a month doing nothing but Hank and Bobby and Dale, you can replace Mike Judge. I can. <laughs> well, he's alive. Damn it! I guess I'll have to learn Luann. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. I don't like babysitting drunks. You know, mm. I don't want to be responsible for for what you've chosen to put in your body tonight. Like like you should. You should be able. You should have planned ahead. You should have already had a ride home and and like a place to sleep and and like already gotten some some Alka Seltzer ready for for like the night ahead of you or whatever. I don't want to be your babysitter. Yeah. You're you always like, prepped with the Alka Seltzer and the. Uh, I don't get drunk. I don't get like like fall down like vomiting drunk. I haven't thrown up from alcohol um, probably since the last time Woody saw me throw up from alcohol. <laughs> uh, well, no, I was meaning, but you're still drinking and like eating stuff that's gonna. Give you I take a, I take an well I, I've always got my tums here handy. yeah that's what I mean like you, when you're done you're gonna chase it with one of those make sure that you don't because I'm sure you're gonna eat something delicious and fried after this no I'm all I'm all I'm all full for the evening I had uh I had a delicious burger for lunch and that's all I ate today but I, I what I I take an antacid every day like like a Zantac 150 or something mm -hmm. like that because if I don't I get really bad acid reflux and it doesn't have to do with alcohol it's just you just have it. I just have it. You know, I always say every day, no matter what I eat, like, like I guess if I ate porridge or something like that, and it, it wouldn't happen. But I'm, you don't want to resign yourself to a life of porridge. Well, You're not a little boat. I'm not a little boat peeve. I'm not some sort of fairy tale character. Eh, more, per more porridge, sir. No, um, I'm eating like jalapeno burgers and, and bullshit like that. I like spicy food. But yeah, I haven't vomited from from getting drunk, and I I don't I haven't gotten like pissed drunk in a really long time the last time i got crazy drunk ah, and i remember now it was that drinking episode where i made fun of riley for having a spinal injury oh was that, <laughs> that was the one with uh with dick on right yeah that's the drunkest i've been in years and then before that you have to go back to like one of our like paintball trips or something maybe the one where i vomited out the window while joe lozon drove the car or, or <laughs> that was whatever. all the way drunk that was all the way drunk. Mm -hmm. and, and in my defense, it's like... They were pushing I'm not regular... alcohol on you. Well, They're in your defense it. also, you were courteous enough to do it outside the car. I got my head outside he, uh, the he window. He put his head out the vehicle. window. I don't know if that's outside the car. Yeah, it's, it's outside the car. It, it's, trust me, if, it, if I'd vomited inside the car, there'd been no doubt. It was a rental <laughs> car, I think, anyway. It absolutely was a rental car. I was. It blasted down the side of the vehicle. If you return it, you're like, and then it was just one complaint. There's still <laughs> wet vomit in the floor here. I can't believe you rented me a car with wet vomit. <laughs> it smells horrid. It smells I, I have something on my lip. It, oh, no. That, that's, <laughs> this is that, less than a day old. I don't know what you guys were doing. <laughs> yeah, that was fucking bullshit. We were at that the Tilted Kilt in oh. Bowling Brook, Chicago, I want to say, or something like that. Bowling, some, something like that. And fuck, did I get shit faced? Oh my god, the owner. That was a, there was no way around it. There was no way around it. Like the <laughs> owner of the place, like knew who I was and was like a fan. They were playing my goddamn video. It was like a sports bar. And like they had TVs in the place. Half the TVs are playing football and hockey, and the other half are playing my videos. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we've got a table of like eighteen of us there, and everybody's buying me a drink, and everybody's picking like whatever their favorite drink is. Nobody's asking me what I want. Mm -hmm. I ordered what I wanted—a single Dosecki beer. 
That's what I wanted. I think they were also assuming you wanted vodka. I think there was a lot of vodka. They I don't always know. assume I want vodka. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's kind of, that's true now. I've kind of warmed up to it. But back then it was tequila. I always, I, I would always, and I'd probably, if I were out drinking, I'd probably go with tequila. You know, I, I like tequila a lot. Why don't you switch up your, uh, your drinking, like when you're playing video games and mix it up with some tequila? I don't know that, that the Tito's goes down so fucking smooth and there's no real flavor. You know, it's just, I drank, uh, I drank some, uh, what is it? Glenn Fittich? Yeah. That scotch. Is? Yeah. I had a Glenn Fittich 12 today, uh, at, at lunch with my, with my burger. It was disgusting. <laughs> you just it happened was. to have Glenn Fittich 12. Yeah. Uh, I was at a friend's house. She had it and I was like, this is all you got? She's like, yeah. <sighs> I smelled it, and I literally cringed when I smelled it. I went, <sighs> I've been there. I shivered. I've been I there. shivered. I, I shivered from the smell of it. <laughs> and I was like, do you, do you have anything to chase it with? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just, you just got a burger and fries. You can just... <laughs> I, I was like, and I found, like, she, she had a Coca-Cola, and I poured some Coke on ice, and I was just like, gl- gl- oh. <laughs> I did like, you know, a couple of shots of that, enjoyed my burger and took a little nap and it was disgusting. I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. But anyway, that, that, that trip there, like as soon as we sat down at the fucking table in Chicago, it was like, I had, I, I had the beer I ordered and then I had like two shots of Jameson and a shot of vodka and some sort of weird and, and a Jaeger bomb and then some other mixed drink. And it's all for me. It's, it's all healing the- in your belly together. I haven't even started on them yet. They're just sitting there. Like, like I'm not saying one after another. This happened, and then a few minutes later there was this drink. I'm saying immediately all of these drinks were pushed in front of me. Like, like, like somebody was like, "Yeah, a shot of Jameson for everyone at the table." And I was like, "Well, I've got that shot here." And oh yeah, here, Kyle, here's a shot of tequila. And that now that's sitting there. I haven't even start, taken my first sip of anything yet. And I've got like five, literally five drinks. Like, and so I just went through them real quick, and I'm wasted already. Like we just got here, and I'm too drunk. I'm too drunk already, and we just arrived. And I remember going to the bathroom and pissing, and like I, I pissed, and I flushed the toilet, and I put the toilet seat down, and I sat there, and I, I remember distinctly looking at the floor, <laughs> and going, "You already ruined the night. Yeah, <laughs> this was gonna be a great night. You, you didn't want to try and force a yak. I was like, you probably could have fucked one of those waitresses. They're playing your fucking videos out there. Yeah. They want to know who you are." You could have mm-hmm. fucked one of those dirty Hooters because it's like Hooters, but uh-huh. but, but like a like a Scottish spin on it. Could have fucked one of those bitches. The owner would have given you the give me a little help there. He's the owner's got me in the back of the kitchen. He brings out an assault rifle in the kitchen of the restaurant and had me him signing it in the back room somewhere. Hmm. Jeremy's there, <laughs> <laughs> and, Jer- and so now it's me and Jeremy and the owner, and we're out back in an alley, like smoking cigarettes, wasted. And and the owner and and the owner's like, uh, obviously he runs a bar, so like alcohol is worthless to him. It's like mm-hmm. it's like ammo for me. And he, he's just like, yeah, if you want to take a couple of cases of beer back with you, you know, feel free. And I'm like, oh no, 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 I'm honestly, I, I'm kind of shit faced right now, and I don't want any more beer. And Jeremy's like, I'll take a few cases. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, that's so Jeremy, that's so fucking trashy, <laughs> right? Jeremy's like. Uh. I, I'll take a few of them free cases of beer. Uh, I, I, I'm an FPS Russia sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> I load the magazine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that like, guy, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it, I don't know. I, I, that takes me back yeah. in a special kind of way. Like, like, yeah, that's everything I know about Jeremy right there. Yeah, just <laughs> immediately piped up. No shame. Mm-hmm. No like awareness of the social situation that he was in. That like, oh, this guy's offering this thing to Kyle because like. He's a fan of Kyle. He really likes what Kyle does. He, he really likes Kyle right? and he wants to befriend Jeremy's Kyle. He's acting way. like he's doing it because he has too much alcohol on hand. Exactly. Like, oh, <laughs> well, hell, if, you, if you've got too many Dos Equis, I'll take a few cases. Yeah. <laughs> don't you, no, you don't Jeremy. keep in contact with him anymore, right? Yeah, I, I spoke to him oh, two months ago or something like that. Yeah, I was back home and I was, you know. What's, what's he up to? up to? Did we get a Jeremy update? Working or? hard. Working hard in a, in a welding. Um, he, he he does some sort of like welding where he, he like he, certified and such. Like he, I don't know about that. Okay. But like he, he works at a job where he assembles like fuel tanks or something like that. So he like moves multiple components, assembles them together, welds them together and like test proofs them with some pressure bullshit and sends them on down the line. 
you know, it's it's a, it's a hard job, but he gets he works like a ton of hours, and he, he's making a decent living now. And he's got I don't even know how many fucking kids, dude. Like, <laughs> like he, the lady he married already had at least one, maybe two, and then he's had at least three, maybe four with her, to the point where he's got somewhere between four and six children under that roof at this point. Jesus. It's a shit show. It's a fucking shit show. How old is he? Fuck. Uh, 25, 26? Wow. Can't be 27. <laughs> um, and, you know, just a moron. I mean, Woody's met the man. Is this the... Is this a, he, he, you know Jeremy. And, yeah, I and, mean, I bet his IQ is over 80. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere between 80 and 90, I would say. Yeah. Um, and it, it just... just and he's a so he'd vaunter. be like a pretty bright guy in Somalia. Yes, <laughs> yes, he would be. Do you think they have a low IQ in Somalia? Just to they don't have a regular. Oh yeah, you just look up like world IQ by map. You can see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, I just picked them because I like off the top of my head, I feel like that's one of the lowest. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't just, know why I thought them. every population that was big enough would just center at a hundred. Oh yeah, you... no, that's what some people would like you to believe, but. No, but anyway, no. Jeremy's 20, 25, maybe twenty six years old. And he has yeah, with like a whole, like a like he's Is got he like half Mormon? a baseball team. Uh, no, no, he's he's half a baseball team. Yeah, he's he fucking <laughs> start. He's got a starting lineup over there at this point, and he's also like a volunteer fireman or some bullshit like that. It's like, how are you finding time to volunteer as a fireman? Oh, you get you enough got... kids and you find a way to get out of the house. That's what I was thinking too. And his wife is a nut job, from what I've been told. Like, like you know, and really? people would know her and say she's a real nutty bitch. It's interesting. Uh, I, I, he's not the only guy that I know who's like kind of made more of himself after a couple of kids. Like they found that to be what they needed to get kicked into gear. I don't know. I've seen that with the friends in my own life where like once they have a kid, like a, a weird thing clicks and it's like they, they go into overdrive. Sometimes with athletes, it goes the other way. Like it, their, their whole life was centered on that thing. And now they have kids and they're like, you know what? Actually I could take or leave this thing. That actually makes sense. I'd, I'd never thought about that. Yeah, yeah Jeremy's athletes, the they already make so much. Jeremy is just, has always been just a perpetual kind of stupid, shitty person. You know, not not intentional. Like, he'd never, he, he doesn't do intentional. wrong. He, I don't like that he borrows your guns with no intention of giving them back. Like, you have to catch He doesn't know any better. He doesn't know any better. He's just, like, he's, you know, he's environmentally shitty in that way, you know? Like, like I, I, you know, if you I'm really not lending him down, my sewing machine. <laughs> no, he, he, he doesn't. He doesn't want it. Jeremy is a straight man. Oh, uh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, that makes yeah, sense. yeah, yeah. But but you know, he's done plenty of shitty things. Like like his borrowing he often amounts to stealing. You know, like like I he really just takes really things. don't like. That. I don't know. That one sinks deeper with me than almost anything else I've ever heard about him. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. I'm pretty sure he's stolen. I've talked about it before. I'm sure I'm sure he's stolen a bunch of stuff from me in the past. But he wasn't stealing it like like like. If you imagine he wasn't doing it maliciously, he wasn't. He really, it's really not malicious stealing. It's he's he pictures himself as like this character who who has less than he needs, and he sees a character who has more than they need in his evaluation of them, and he's like, well, hey, if I had more than I needed, I would happily, you know, just toss it away because that's what he does when he gets any money, you know, no matter how much I paid him over the years, it was all gone by Monday, you know, mm. it, it was always gone. I was like, oh, I got money in my hands. What do I fucking do with money? Yeah. Here, here. Yeah. I need new tires. I just I need... see him like, hey, Kyle, can I borrow what a cordless impact driver? Who got me a new cordless impact driver? Unless Kyle remembers, I got it. Yeah, like, I we feel like a... he's not so dumb that thought isn't in his head. Oh, it's in his head. Um, we we pulled a prank on him one time to see how he would react. Uh, he had like a couple of guns in his car that were mine, and. Uh, his car was parked there at my dad's place and he was he was in the field doing something driving a tractor or something and uh so scott and i go out to his truck and we 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 get my guns out of his car it wasn't anything crazy a couple handguns and a shotgun and uh we take them out at least yeah T take them out hide them in my car don't say a fucking thing don't say anything three days go by he doesn't say anything. Four days go by. I'm like, Jeremy, uh, hey, do you do you have that pump shotgun? 
I'm going to go uh, I'll just make something up. I don't remember what I said. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go dove hunting or I'm going to go. I need it for a video or I, I'm going to do a thing. I ain't got that pump shotgun. You got the, the Remington. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, it's at home. I'll, uh, I'll bring it by tomorrow. He knows it's not at home. He <laughs> thinks he's lost it. He thinks it's been stolen from him. It has been kind of. It has been stolen. <laughs> no, it's this been went returned. On for, yeah. This went on for three days with me gen- like ramping up every day. Hey, I really need it, man. Come on, tomorrow, right? You want me to, I, I can come back with your place and get it tonight if, you, if you're not going to be able to bring it tomorrow. Oh, no, I, I'll bring it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he's just sweating it out over there thinking that he's lost a, a grand worth of guns or whatever that he's going to be responsible for, and he's just lying through his rotten teeth <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> lying through his gums lying through his tooth. <laughs> so yeah I, I don't know you know he, he's a piece of shit but i guess he was kind of my piece of shit so it, you know I, I forgive a lot I'm a, I'm a nice guy in that way i suppose it was he was always good for a laugh he'd just do the stupidest shit you know he was he was comic relief you know mm-hmm. scott and i have ha- gun permits you know to open carry or concealed carry and we would oftentimes, especially in Texas, every, everybody, they, it's like wearing boots when you go to Texas. If you want to fit in, just th- throw a fucking handgun on your hip and they, they think you're cool. And, and, and I'd look and Jeremy's got a gun stuck in his pants. And I'm like, Jeremy, what are you doing with a gun stuck in your pants? You can't do that. We're at Circle K. <laughs> <laughs> Or everybody else got a gun. Yeah, everybody else t- that took the test and tried to file, <laughs> the, file the paperwork. Everybody else has a little card right here that says we can, except for you, the guy with the Ruger in his back pocket. Mm-hmm. Billionaires, fun little uh, pool boy scenario. For I would like be his blood 50, donor. For 50 grand a, a month. <laughs> Have you? you heard that the blood donor thing is real? I, yeah, I don't know what course. you're referring to, the blood donor. Not letting oh. homosexuals donate blood? No, they are literally oh. taking blood donations from young men and putting them in older wealthy men as a like anti-aging technique. And uh, Joe Rogan had an anti-aging expert on, and he's like, "Does it work?" And basically, like I'm going to paraphrase, but he said, "Yes, it works, but it's not the best way." And he's like, "I think that we'll start identifying like better ways to prevent yeah. aging. You want to drink it." Ideally, <laughs> well, like a, you know, like a, a make a chemical change in in the guy instead of just getting blood out of him. But oh, you yeah. want to be very afraid. That matters. What does it do for you? Does it make you like fat, like less fatigued? I or? don't even know, right? But I just have to imagine that a younger man's blood has all the good shit in it. Like your your testosterone level is higher, right? Mm-hmm. Is that not in your blood? If you gave me half, if we just, if I gave you half my blood and you gave me half yours, would our T levels not just meet in the middle, right? Where is the T exactly if not in the blood? You know, is your insulin level lower? Have you been working hard to increase your red blood cell count? Because I want some of that shit. Bring it here, Taylor. Like, there has to be a lot of great shit in young, healthy blood. We need to start blood farms. Where are the where mm. in the world are we people the fittest like naturally? Tilf. New Netherlands. Netherlands, we need the Netherlands, or just or like Kenya. you should be able to. We Kenya, want the runners. AIDS, oh Kenya. yeah, let me get some of that African blood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're, no risk, no reward, Kyle. <laughs> I, I, totally, I wasn't thinking about. That. Oh, I, I was. give you all of my blood. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to roll the dice on this if you want Ace Number One blood. You might get a runner. You might get a, a victim. You just Could suddenly are, have a lot of stamina with your Kenyan blood. That'd be cool. And I have no immune system. <laughs> <laughs> you now have a sickle cell. <laughs> <laughs> the only white man with sickle cell on the planet. But yeah, apparently, I, like um, sickle cell is is good for some people in Africa because it makes it some mala- you malaria. You can't contract malaria, and so yeah, it was like almost so. an adaptation that it's kind it of. Is. I know there's like yeah. other problems with sickle cell for like clotting, but if it's between clotting and fucking malaria. Think you you go with the, the risk of clotting? How bad malaria is malaria? Will kill you. Does it? It will really kill you. Does yeah, it? it's definitely going to kill you. Yes. See now, unless I yeah, question that, I feel like a lot of people survive malaria. I think a few people survive. You will die. All of my children die. <laughs> uh, malaria kills a child every thirty seconds. Yes. Uh, oh, a million a year. That's actually way less than I thought. How deadly oh, this is, is a, malaria? Okay. Let's see. How many people died of malaria? You will triple until your bones break. Huh. I guess they're... 
This isn't nearly as many people as I was imagining. I mean, they get treatment for it now. You want to be in the jungle with malaria? No, I don't want to be in the jungle with malaria. I just had this idea that it was like... Oh, AIDS slash... Or HIV AIDS is the biggest killer in Africa by a large margin with 122 deaths per 100,000 people. Yeah, you don't want malaria. You don't want that. There's more people with HIV and AIDS than malaria at this point in time, apparently. Well, that would make sense because there's no cure for HIV, but malaria comes and goes, right? No, there is a cure. You just need $200,000 cash. Yeah. Or, the, <laughs> or the blood of a white man. <laughs> <laughs> then you may check his head for gold. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't prove that young people's blood would make you younger, but it just seems like there'd be a lot of good shit in it. I can yeah. tell you it definitely doesn't make you younger. But like it, it's, right, it's right. gonna it's, make it's, you. Yeah. I'm with you. It's not gonna anti-age. But like, if young Woody's blood, like I was working out four or six hours a day during the season, that had to be some good shit. Yeah, that that would be a cool like billionaire thing. Like you know, you see those things in movies where it's like a bunch of billionaires sitting behind like kind of obscure glass, and there's something in the middle, and they're like a hexagon, and they're watching a woman strip, and they're bidding because they want to like either fuck her or like cut her hands off, and they're like like island estate. That, but you get like world class athletes in there and you bid on like liters of blood. And then once you've collected enough blood, you can have elite athlete blood. You know, Silicon Valley on the HBO, that's one of their yeah. specials. Yeah, Gavin something, McLean, McClurg. He, uh, he gets blood from a young person in that show. So I didn't realize it was based on truth though. I thought they came up with it. Yeah, I didn't either. Bitcoin. Well, Oh, we, before we, we jump to this? Bitcoin, is uh, there anything you need to tell us about Kyle? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did we all do right. all four? I think we might have. Yep. Um, dude, so this guy had a hundred and ninety million dollars worth of Bitcoin in cold storage. But cold storage means it's offline. If you don't know, Bitcoin's kind of untrackable. It's kind of like cash, right? If I take your Bitcoin, then suddenly it's mine. It's not like it's in a bank. Where we can be like, oh, look, it was transferred from Taylor's account to Woody. We'll put it back. No, it's just like cash. Just gone. So what people can do to keep it safe, because if you have it in an online account, people hack it and it happens and they really steal your money and you can lose a lot. $190 million in cold storage. Think of it as a USB drive in a vault, literally. <clears throat> anyway, this guy that had the decryption code died. And a hundred and ninety million dollars worth of Bitcoin appears to be unrecoverable. Yep, dude, saw like, that. That's a real problem. I, 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 I like to imagine that it was so diversified that like a million people all lost one hundred ninety dollars. But you know that the fact is that several people lost millions of dollars. Yes, and I, I don't know this for sure, but I feel like the kind of person that has millions in Bitcoin doesn't have millions all over the place. Like if, if you lose 3 million in Bitcoin, you've lost 90% of your net worth, I think. Maybe, maybe. Someone did. Like, like, like I'd love to hear the anecdotal like case by case sort of thing. Like, like you know, the people com making complaints against this. It, that's fucked. I, I read that Dude. and I was like, oh my God. So is Bitcoin ending up to be like, like kind of that same model as like the tulip boom? I, I want to say I read that there were more transactions last month than there were this time last year and the year before. What do you think the heaviest carnivore you could beat is? And this uh, is a wild animal, not like a... redemption. He's <laughs> okay. not a carnivore, though. Oh, he's an uh, omnivore. Have you yeah. seen him dig into a Wendy's chili? <laughs> I'm going for a wild <laughs> what predator. What do you think's in chili? <laughs> the, the, like the heaviest wild predator. I think at... I think at 30 pounds on the clear winner. I can beat it. 30 pound predator. I could take a killer whale on land. Guaranteed. Yeah, yeah he would not stand a chance. Although, if neither of you are playing shallows. by these rules, then you know it. <laughs> oh, what are you trying to be funny for, Taylor? Let's get serious about this. <laughs> right, let's, let's use kilos because that's a scientific <laughs> measurement. It's not, I mean, it, well, it's not much of a conversation if it's just. <laughs> what's a, what's a big. It's just a okay, what's, what's, the, land. what's the biggest one you think that you could take then? I could definitely take a coyote. All right, we're doing it completely unarmed, right? That's the deal. You're there naked. Yeah. Oh shit! That, naked my, and afraid, I'm, like that really give good. Give me a TV thong. Show. Give me like one of those leather, like Tarzan thongs, to at least keep my balls from being. You just already ripped. had it in my mind, Kyle. 
Okay, Thank you've you. got the banana hammock that oh. Chris Pontius wears in Wild Boys. Oh, yes. not, not a version flop, of that, flop, the same flop, one. Flop, flop, flop. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Okay, okay. Um, I could take a, I could take an adult coyote. And I say that because I have had real world experiences with adult coyotes. And I have seen them fall and pray to a, to a grown man with a club before. My dad beat one to death with a maglite flashlight one time. And it didn't stand a chance. I mean... Ooh. Yeah, I, I think I could take. A, I could definitely take a coyote. The big one only weighs forty six pounds. Yeah, they're they're a, they're they're quite small, and and they're they're often like underfed, and like sickly to begin with because of you know their lifestyle and it's it's hard out there for a coyote. I think I could take <laughs> a coyote. Yeah, that's. I feel like I could go a little bigger than a coyote. Is there anything between coyote and wolf other than dog? I could take koi, a dog. The koi wolf. There's got to be some those cats the, in the, there. How much is a puma the sly ones? A puma's pretty big, right? Oh, a puma, a puma is essentially a mountain lion. Mm. Puma animal, not the brand of shoes, you silly Google. <laughs> oh, a puma is the same thing, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's like the mm. South American A puma, a cougar, lion. and a mountain lion, all the same. Yeah. Oh. I think it's racist to make the black ones seem different. I think it's a hyena. Ooh, oh, you do not want to fuck dead. with a hyena. <laughs> ah, that's way too big. That would fuck me up. Way too big. I've seen Somalians with like pet hyenas on a chain before. That thing is more intimidating than any pit bull you'll ever see. And they have that incredible jaw strength because what they do in the wild is they scavenge the, the carcasses of animals that lions have left behind because they possess jaw strength powerful enough to crush the bones of like wildebeest and stuff and get the marrow out that the lions cannot get to. How badass is a honey badger? Is it? We've all seen it, right? So here's it. I've learned a little bit about honey badgers recently. I was curious. Is they were on Tier Zoo, amazing YouTube channel, and uh, they think honey badgers are like totally badass. The truth is, they have low mobility, so they have to stand their ground. They can't run away from almost anything. They, they've they've stacked all their points, according to Tier Zoo, into. Uh, armor or something like that mm. so they have a thick hide and they're hard to bite and they're hard to hurt but they can't run away which is why they stand their ground against badass animals but are they, they would still that? get you pretty good because Z like based on that video i watched that was a parody video from like 10 years ago on youtube shit, like honey yeah. badger don't give a fuck yeah don't fucking care i don't remember what it is like if you try to grab them like around they have so much flexibility in their own skin. It's Ooh. like grabbing somebody in a big woolly coat. They could still just flip around and man, like snap yeah. you. Like, like even more range with than jaws. like a, You'd like have a to grab it turtle. real close to the head like a snake almost. Yeah, and yeah. also like you couldn't poison it. Because I watched a YouTube clip mm -hmm. of like them just like going and antagonizing a cobra. And that they was going to be like first move. Three or four times. And then they <laughs> kill it. And then before they get like the chance to eat the dead cobra, they like curl over. And then, like, the announcer's like, but just four hours later, he's back and ready to eat. <laughs> and he just, like, kind of twitches up and is ready to go. So I, I could definitely take those because I imagine they're, like, what, 10 pounds? I don't know, man. I think, pounds. I think we're underestimating just how bad it would be if this thing bit your finger. Like, like, like you'd have to be in wild man mode yourself. Like, like, we're very well fed, all of us here sitting here. I don't think any – none of us are hungry right now. We all ate no. dinner. Or mm -hmm. lunch, at least. Like, like we're not ravenous. If, if we were to get into a fight with a fucking honey badger in our garage right fucking now, and that thing got you one of your fingers and, like, took the tip off, like, took the whole fingernail and the tip off, you don't want to play anymore. Yeah. Meanwhile. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's really, got a little bit of food. It's, it's amped up. Now it's, it's got a taste bad. for human flesh. Okay? <laughs> it doesn't matter if you literally bite one of his feet off. He's going to be like, all right, scores one and one. Let's keep going. <laughs> Dude, I definitely well. wouldn't go. My tactic would not be bite for bite. Oh, <laughs> a honey badger. I would what definitely would your use tactic my hands. be on a honey badger? Like, honestly, I think I would try and grab mm -hmm. any limb or anywhere one of and the then, just start, then just start spinning and just hope that the centrifugal <laughs> force of it is enough to keep him so he's like in one of those, <laughs> like, you know, get out here! I can't do this much longer! Like, you know those, those fair rides where you sit in the swing and you're oh, going around? Yeah. Like, you need to get him going fast enough that he's like a fighter pilot in one of those Soviet things and his face is blown back and he doesn't have the ability to spin around in his coat and bite you. And you have to hope you can make him pass out from G-forces before you get tired. Could you stomp his head? If you grabbed him, 
Could you not get a foot on I his think, head? You're a 200 a pound-ish man. I don't know, 195 or something. I could definitely like, crush a head, yeah. Like, if he sat there and was like, please, sir, crush my head. That'd be the way but, to do it, though. Spin it around, disorient it, make it dizzy, hurl it to the ground, and then real quick, just yeah. both legs jump up and stop. If you got a grab on it, you could slam it like Bam Bam. I don't know if people are too young to get that reference, but the, you know, the Barney I Rubble's I kid, where you just slam it on the ground a couple of times, that would... That would hurt it, right? Like, is there any animal that can deal with Bam Bam attack? No. You, you, if you, I, I prefer to think of it as like the Hulk attack. Like okay. what he did to yeah, Loki. Yeah, yeah. And, and Avengers like Loki. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just, just, you know, Hulk smash. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a Hulk smash maneuver. If the trick is getting it, though, I, that, wild animals are fucking wild animals. I mean, if you ever got both of its legs in one fist, it's just going to like do a sit up and start just mauling your arm. I, I, I oh, see, yeah. that's, no. the, that's the approach to the argument that I never quite like buy into. Like, like I get it. Humans are more easily discouraged than like geese and honey badgers who for some reason just aren't intimidated. But if you're in a situation where you're not just fighting for fun, you know, this isn't joy that you really need to kill this thing for some reason. There's, there's $10 million on the other end of the line. Oh. Then all of and, a sudden, the the, like, well, you don't understand. I lost the tip of my pinky. It's like, oh, I don't know. Like, that's that's okay in a $10 million fight. You don't get discouraged that easily. That's true. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to take a honey badger, but it's really the ferocity of it. Because, like, compared For to 10 animals, million, you wouldn't we it? are... No, no, we would beat it, but I'm saying like just a regular fight without the money. Like humans, we're like baby back bitches of the animal kingdom. Like we suck. Like our power lifters, uh, like the the Thor, whatever Thor Bjornsson or whatever the guy who plays the mountain. Like he's over there, like I'm gonna deadlift a thousand pounds. Do you know that we've never taught a gorilla how to do deadlifts or bench press or <laughs> overhead press squats? So we we see gorillas who don't even work out. The if gorilla we could teach them to use barbell techniques. Imagine the kind of gorilla we could create. The they gorillas would one that hand we interact with, fifteen hundred pounds. The gorillas that we interact with, that we think of these killing machines, are the Homer Simpsons mm -hmm. of the animal kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> the gorilla world, okay, they're sitting around all day chewing on bamboo or whatever the fuck those things eat. We've never met a motivated, athletic chimpanzee or gorilla or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They're just sitting around lazing and fucking. Yeah, I mean a chimpanzee. Those are probably the scariest thing to fight because you know they're coming dirty. They're going to rip your dick off. They're going to rip your eyes out. They're going to tear your nose off. Too. Like if I... Have I you ever seen a lion fight a hyena? Yeah, it's not much of a fight. They, like they get scared. Or maybe I'm no, not, I haven't watched but, him in wait, So usually it's, it's multiple hyenas against a lion and he fights the whole time sitting down because they nip at his balls. And it's like... Uh, <laughs> like it's really a disadvantage to have to sit the whole time you fight and that's how they do it. Those are the worst like animal clips that you see online where it's like hyena just wants a taste and it's like a water buffalo with like its scrotum being stretched two feet back by <laughs> some hyena and you're like, ah, yeah, and you just know the things like fight without balls. <laughs> take my balls out of your mouth. I'll feed you my kid. But I like, <laughs> I like the $10 million thing. I've never said it before for $10 million. You don't think you can beat a hawk? Or an eagle? For one million, for 50 grand, I'll fight 10 hawks. <laughs> <laughs> All at once, just give me, an, like a, give me a paintball mask and a, and a nine iron. <laughs> and, I, and I will, in 50 grand, I'll take on 10 hawks. <laughs> I want to watch that TV show so goddamn badly. And welcome to the apiary death match. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How many owls can, you, you, you remember that thing in game shows they used to do where they put you in the booth and then... Yeah. Air flows up from the bottom, and there's money like all around you. And you're mm -hmm. trying to grab the money. It's that, except with eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Birds shoot out of the ground. And here's Taylor in the eagle booth. Let's see how he. Oh, not well. He is now, not faring now well. Now, if he's they... smart, Tom, he's going to try and crack one of them right off the front with a chip. It's coming out of the hole. He missed. That is a 120 mile per hour bird he's dealing with. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> I don't know how fast. They're much oh, faster they're gonna... than me. We're going to be you know? firing them out of cannons every day. <laughs> the, um, like what happens to me a lot, people will send me a picture of like a big bird's claw and say, look at how this thing, imagine that getting a hold of your arm. And I think, yeah, that's terrible, but that's a non-deadly blow. It would be a real mistake if I could grab him with my other hand. And then, then it's just an eight-pound bird. You could slam him the like a turkey. Would, the thing that would scare me more than the talons is if they latch on and you're dealing with talons, but then they go, whop, whop, and now you're blind. Yeah. Or they, they double, eye, double eye grab. That's what they do. Oh, I mean, I don't know, but I'm going to go with yes. 
I don't think they do that. I think they fight really not. small <laughs> things, pick them up and drop them. Like they're, they're not yeah. eye grabbers. I they wouldn't be. We're talking stars. about the ones though that fly and grab goats on a cliffside and drop the goat off the side of a mountain. That's the bird that you were fighting with. Baby, Those baby are hilarious goats. clips. And it's like you are such an evil yeah, person. The it's ego picks goat. up the goat. Well, the, 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 the chicks are gonna die if they, she doesn't kill that. that you know, and the, Those the goat are bad is not chicks. the animal of they're the little USA. Hitlers. Right? No, it's just like, and she drops gonna... him off the side, and you just hear that. Bah! All I hear is <laughs> the chicks won't grow up to kill goats either, and I'm like, ah, it's little baby Hitlers, fuck those birds. Yeah, uh, well, the next thing you know, and anytime Satan is depicted, I notice he has a goat's head. Okay, fair That's counterpoint. True. Yeah, I, all right. But he has one of the cool goat heads with like four horns on it, where he's got like, two forward and then like two on the side. We we're talking yeah. about hyenas. Did you know that female hyenas have pseudo dicks? Yeah. Like they have, so the male hyena has a penis, right? Because you need to procreate. The female mm -hmm. hyenas are bigger than the males. It's like it's like an oddly sexually dimorphic species for okay. a mammal, and they have quasi dicks, like pseudo dicks, that are even bigger than the male's real dicks. Mm -hmm. And the reason they have it, I'm pretty sure, is that they will they'll rape uppity males into submission to be like, oh, you're gonna misbehave. How do you like a little dick? You don't have a you don't have a pussy, sir. So your ass is getting blown out in the Serengeti here. You're humiliated in front of your laughing friends by this dry, dusty proto cock. Oh yeah, there, there's no lube. You think she spits on it first? <laughs> Hell no. No, it's just dry dick, and she and everybody's laughing at him. And it so they're pretty cool animals in that way. The, yeah. that's the only instance of pegging in the animal kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> to my knowledge. What he's like, is this true? Or are they fucking with it? Yeah, it's true. They got these. I've yeah. seen them. It, it, I don't know. Pseudo penis. If, yeah, I don't know if the point of the pseudo penis is to to peg the males to keep. Them no, alive. I might have made that up. I don't know. Yeah, you you definitely did, but um, but they definitely exist. I, well, what's I, the I, point of it otherwise? Just to I have a pseudo deck? I, I don't remember what the point was, but I've definitely seen them, and they are a thing for sure. What does it? I don't remember what it looks like. Does it look like a real dick? It's a clitoris it looks like a, that's seven inches long and outside yeah. the body. I don't know if this website's going to say there's a reason for it. But every time there's one of those reasons, they feel a little reverse engineered to me anyway. Like, oh, yeah, they, they, they have that to help. The, whatever, you just made up a reason. What do they do with it is what I want to know. You know, I, I don't need any conjecture. I, I want to see this thing in action. Do they just, they just have it and we the don't really know? The or... fused together to resemble a male scrotum. Just throwing it out God, there. It's so gross. I don't need that. See, that's an animal that I wouldn't want to be. Hmm. Oh, they give birth through their fake dicks. Oh, that's right. I I heard that too. That's that disgusting. True? Yeah, they give birth through the fake dicks, and 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 often they're they're, they're these failed births. How big and, does it open? Sometimes I mean, not big it, enough. It says uh, the clitoris birth canal is only an inch in diameter, and the tissue often tears as a two-pound cub squeezes through the narrow opening. The rip can be fatal, as evidenced by the high death rate of first-time mothers. Yeah. Because of the awkward female, or the female's awkward genitalia, successful mating for hyenas is tricky to pull off. It takes careful positioning for the male to crouch behind her and somehow get his penis to point up and backwards to enter her clitoris. I don't I even. I don't know of how a that Female works. dick on on screen right now, and I mean it's big. You'd hardly how, think how, this was a girl. How would you? I don't. I don't understand how animals without hands get their dick into her fake dick. How do they masturbate? That's the question. I don't think they do jack off. Nah, that would. Suck. You know, elephants beat off. Yeah. No, they didn't. Yeah, they do. Yeah, do this they... is a real thing you can look up. The way they do it is they get a hard on and they just move in a way that it slaps their dick on their belly. I thought for sure the trunk would be involved. I, I you know what? I still choose to believe it is. <laughs> well, the trunk maybe if it's like super hung. I don't know the distance of the trunk to the back of the dick area. Oh, uh, you have like to. The, the elephant torso is. You have enormous. to lay on your back so the gravity holds your big elephant ass towards your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> See, just, dude, that would be so fucking funny if you saw an elephant sitting in the Serengeti. And like, <laughs> Evidence of elephant's intelligence is seen by their auto techniques. Yeah. One Kenyan taught them this, and now they all do it all the time. <laughs> just sitting there sucking himself, jacking himself off. That'd be birth rates <laughs> have fallen dramatically since the herd learned to suck their own cocks. The inclusion of elephant porn into their societies has caused many problems with sexual performance, leading to a need for blue chew in the Serengeti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, animals. 
Super fascinating. I wonder what animals would think was so weird about us if they, and probably that, you know, like, you see these guys, they build things. Like, yeah, they can we, talk. We've got cars and shit, you know, and they, they don't differentiate between us. I bet and, they think you know. we're noisy. I, I feel like we oh, talk probably. way more than any other animal yeah. I can think of. So many cool animals went extinct, though. I was, I was, I was reading today about these armadillos that lived like 40,000 years ago or something. And they were so fucking enormous that early man would use their shells as a shelter. They were the size of a Volkswagen bug. Jesus. Like, yeah. Yeah. Woolly mammoths went extinct. There were a lot of cool big ones. The animals have shrunk Saber toothed tigers. Mm -hmm. There were these gigantic, uh, uh, like anteater things. Poorly they, designed saber toothed tigers. Because it turns out that long tooth of theirs was really fragile. And they couldn't use it to hunt. Now, hear me out. They used it for the kill shot. If they tried, you know how now animals run and like, you know, you might run up to it. Not you, but if you were a lion, you'd run up to it mm -hmm. and grab its neck like as part of the tackle. The saber toothed tigers, those teeth were too fragile. And if you broke one, you were like done as a tiger. Like you were going to die, like breaking an arm. So oh, they would, didn't even grow back? Mm -mm. Oh. They would they would tackle it in different ways. And then once they had like, posi you know, position before submission, they, they would go in and just sort of finish it with the big teeth. I didn't know that. That was on YouTube. It's true. I believe you. Yeah. It's called a glyptodon, Kyle. Mm -hmm. And it's a prehistoric armadillo. It, this is literally the article you read, isn't it? Um. I don't think that's the exact one. I was on Wikipedia today. I was having a whole discussion with this lady about early man. 5.3 million to 11,000 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's cool to look back and be like, these animals were pretty neat. But can you imagine how much of a nuisance those would be if they were still, like, meandering around? Like, we, <laughs> if they didn't go extinct before we did it, we would have done it. For sure. We did do it. We did do it. That's, that, that's the theory oh. that, that early man, like, killed them into extinction to make little houses out of them. <laughs> I've heard we killed woolly <laughs> mammoths too, and then I've heard that we didn't. That 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 our impact was overstated, and there were a lot of environmental changes that would have done them into. We were just a contributing factor. What if they just gone north though? You know, uh, yeah, I don't they know. They were already pretty north, right? It's always more north. The true north. So I have two things that I want to talk about tonight. I'll let you guys decide which whether we're gonna take okay. the road less traveled or uh, make a right into Wingstown. Um, I was I don't like to divulge my sources, but but again, these things come to me, and uh, I have some information. Your little birds, my little birds. <laughs> they sing in the east and they sing in the west. They <laughs> sing in the north and the south. And one of them tweeted in my ear earlier today and told me a little secret about Wings's Mustang that he should honestly know about because he's in danger. Or we could talk about what seems to be the most popular game on the planet. Suddenly, like in the last 72 hours, uh, a brand new game come out, came out. I'm still fascinated with Rust. Don't get me wrong. I literally dream in Rust. All of my dreams are in Rust. And this is like week four of you dreaming in Rust. Yeah. He's I'm in love with Rust. the Sulphur King. I'm the Sulphur. <laughs> oh, man. There's, pic there's a picture of me as Tony Montana, but instead of cocaine, it's Sulphur. It's hilarious. Anyway, <laughs> um, so, so we could talk about either of those things. This game is fascinating. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about both of them. But which do you want first? The, the Wings car information or i feel like our audience is hoping we choose wings talk hmm. taylor? taylor i don't even know what this game is and so i don't care about it cool so <laughs> it turns out <clears throat> let me get the actual thing here like the uh the the so my friend who now, has how a credible is this source 100 um okay. i i literally have let me make sure that i can share this without divulging any copy link and uh, yeah, send this to you guys now. So essentially this is a recall form for uh, Mustangs of a certain year. It's 2005, six, seven, something like that in that, in that little category. And essentially um, they're saying, uh, don't show that in case there's something. I was going to ask if I could show it. I don't, Let me, I, I'm looking to see if there's any personal like information. Like a VIN number or something. Yeah, yeah I don't want that. Yeah, yeah, don't don't post it's this not, as a VIN number. Yeah, Where that's, do you see a VIN? Oh, at the top. At the very top. Yeah, that's Wing's VIN number, by the way. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to... Um, essentially, uh, it says... I'll read it. Uh, it's a recall uh, on literally on Wing's vehicle. Uh, there's a risk to safety. The passenger frontal airbag inflator could rupture if the vehicle is involved in a crash where the supplemental frontal airbags are designed to deploy. Basically, if the, if the passenger airbag comes out, then 
Um, metal fragments can enter the passenger compartment, increasing the risk of injury and death to the occupants. And there's a remedy program, which apparently has expired. Um, it even has the, the status of his vehicle here. The recall is incomplete. Um, and I think if, the, if he'd taken care of this last year, it would have been for free, but I believe that the recall is no longer going to be for free. So he'll have to pay for it himself out of pocket, unfortunately. Ugh. Well, he didn't own yeah. the car last year, right? That's right. I'm just saying, like, like he was right on the cusp of not having to that pay close. For this. Well, that fucking sucks. Yeah. It's the. Yeah. Keeps getting worse and worse. Four what, does years he have, ago. What, does, what does he have to do? Uh, I didn't even read what. Yeah. It's the airbag, it's the airbag system, which is not a, a cheap fix. Like, I, I've. I fixed a lot of cars that had been in, in crashes before, and that's the one thing that, that, like, you look if you see a car where the airbags are deployed, you're like, oh, not that one, not that one, because they rip the whole dash apart. They, really? they, 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 yeah. When an airbag comes out, obviously, you know, everything it's gets also apart. dangerous. Like, I, I, maybe Kyle, it, it's like diffusing a bomb. You know, well, if, you, if they've already gone off, you know, then oh, then if you're, they've already good gone in off. that if regard. If you're working with airbags, though, you need to know. Oh that, yeah. They, they're, it's kind of like diffusing a bomb. Don't fuck it yeah, up. Yeah, doing your own airbag installation is also something that that we always try to steer away from because you're you're right. You're kind of you kind of got a bomb in your hands to some regards. It's a big loaded trigger device. But yeah, he's got an expensive fix ahead of him. If he wants to get it fixed, he'll probably just not worry about it. Although he is a bit of a vehicle hypochondriac, so who knows? Uh, it is the passenger airbag, although Ooh. it didn't say that. It said it's going to shoot metal fragments into the cabin. Which I imagine is like a a, a, sh a frag grenade, just sending shrapnel everywhere. <laughs> I would want to get that fixed. Yeah, yeah, like a like a fucking. <sighs> yeah, Poor it wouldn't ways. be like an Indiana Jones trap where like it just all of them go <laughs> sticking the passenger <laughs> seat. He's seat. like, oh, thank God. That none Good of those thing I don't have go. any friends. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how wings fits in the Mustang. I, I don't mean to say it mean, but like fine, fine. Oh, that's that's yeah. good. Even at his biggest, he apparently, I wasn't there for it. He, he hopped in my Camaro one day, he told me, and closed the door, and he was in there. Um, I'm sure it was a bit uncomfortable because it's really narrow seats. Um, uh -huh. But I've seen him get into his Mustang and like hold the camera, and his belly's nowhere near the steering wheel. He's lost a, a, a good amount of weight. I would guess he's 350 would be my guess of his weight right now, 350, 360. Uh, so so he's a little bit quite well. for him then. To me... Yeah, I think he deserved the car. I'm glad he got the car. I think people should lay off him uh, for for getting the car. You know, like like it's it's funny to like joke around about, but but in all seriousness, like good for him. He's, it's a six thousand dollar car, like he said. You I know, can't buy deal. into the fact that he needed it, right? You know, he no, he didn't need he it. He didn't need it. His truck was fine, and he doesn't go that many places, so it wasn't like his truck didn't have twenty more years in it. Because he doesn't. Yeah. I don't drive that much either, so I'm not throwing stones. But when you don't drive a lot, your stuff lasts a long time. Yeah, and if you're not making long trips, then it's not that big of a risk anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my my dad was talking about this the other day. His truck's been giving him the issues. He's got a 2017 Silverado, and he had some sort of a oil issue or something. I don't remember exactly what he said, but it wasn't. He had to go pick up a young lady at the Atlanta airport, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Suddenly, I didn't." My, my truck wasn't working on me. I, I had to go on the other truck. And I, it was a mess. And he was like, he was like but I didn't give a fuck. She was, she, what was she going to do? Say no? <laughs> <laughs> so he's, uh, he, I think he's about to buy himself he's a... He's flying a, bitches in to fuck now? Good for him. He's flying bitches in. Uh, so I think he's, he's, he's about to buy himself a brand new truck. I suggest... Yeah, because that 2017 was getting a little long in the tooth. He's mad at Chevrolet. You don't he's want to have warranty he's service or anything. Chevrolet. Yeah. yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's mad I know he has a only, brand. He may have only two or three spare cars. So you can't just have that thing sitting there getting serviced. Oh, he likes a, he, you know, he needs a 4x4 truck for doing stuff. What's, you know, he, he didn't got, have a you know, backup 4x4 truck? He did. That's what he took. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mr. This. Kyle, Dad. Like, but he ahead. needs, and you know, there are, there are tiers of vehicles that this man has, and he's no wings of redemption, so he's doing okay. So he's going to get himself a brand new truck, and uh, but no more Chevrolet. He's been a he, he he's always like his personal truck has almost always been a Chevrolet. Since Does he do half ton or three quarter ton? Uh, ha half half ton, ton probably right? Huh? Like the the the, the 1500. He has an know, interesting like, like, year. Because it, like so, I'm a I guess I'm an F-150 guy. That's what I chose. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend that stole from me one. Not, we were younger. I was probably 14. I had a jet ski, and uh, 
he had a jet ski too, which made him like a really valuable friend. Right? There weren't a lot of people who had jet skis. So, uh, you know, the fact that we could go play together and stuff meant something. His had a bad carburetor. So our jet skis were Kawasaki 440. That matters because he bought Ooh. a 550 carburetor, like thinking that it would be an upgrade. So he puts it on there. doesn't run right. Like, of course not. Oh, no, no. This is not how it went. I'm sorry. My carburetor went bad. I bought the 550, but he worked at like a jet ski fixing place. So I got the new carburetor. Everything's fixed. It's great. Now his ski doesn't run right. He comes to me and says, look, Woody, here's the deal. That like upgraded carburetor you bought, I took it. I took it and put it on my own jet ski because we both thought it was going to make it better. He's like, well, it doesn't work right. So I want my carburetor, my, you know, the one I stuck on your ski back. And then you can have this one that doesn't work. And it was like, that f- he was my best friend. He was, he was toxic fuck as fuck. You. Yeah. We went like in and out of friendship for a couple of years, actually. Like, that's so shitty. It's yeah, where that's... I learned about toxic friendship. Like he taught me. He, wow. uh, yeah. Like I, I tried. and he wasn't even aware of how shitty he had been. Like, like the, the, he should have sucked it up. It. Like, like. I don't know what he could have done. I, I don't know. He'd done, done the it. wrong thing. To, he was wrong from the get go. You know, right from the right from the jump, he's a piece of shit. I, I was trying to think like, well, I guess what I would have done is like bought another carburetor for you. But, but wait, wait, no, yeah, no. you were shitty from the start. He you was shitty from the start. Carburetor. And then once he realized that stealing, is, I, I bought the wrong carburetor. Essentially, we thought it'd be an upgrade, but it, it wasn't. Yeah. And once he realized that was the case, he's like, oh, well, now you have to live with your mistake that i almost had to live with by stealing it from you yeah that's a shitty fucking thing to do yeah he's a cop now (laughs) (laughs) go figure yeah terrible (laughs) racist cop but uh Uh want you want to go ahead and dox him fully (laughs) (laughs) you know down at the metro police department in bridgeport he's a real scumbag corporal stevenson <laughs> jim stevenson badge number three seven. yeah <laughs> we have like friends in common and i'd find out stuff like uh he tried to hack the like police officers computers he got in trouble for that um this one i almost hardly blame him for but every so often they'd get a bad guy in who they knew was bad right i know the police aren't supposed to be judge and jury but sometimes like i don't know a guy's mid-rape and uh, this guy was strong, and he would beat the bad guy uh, as like the first punishment around. Yeah, I, I've uh, that happens a, a good bit, especially if they have not so much resisted if they've assaulted a cop. Like if during the arrest they uh, they hurt a cop, mm. or if the thing they were being arrested for was hurting a cop, or mm-hmm. uh, in one instance shooting a cop, they get a real working over. That's not like a thing mm-hmm. you just see in like the movies or something like that. They they take an ass beating. Yeah, yeah. This one was it, it was a I'd make that up. It was actually a rape, and uh, so he was just the first line of justice. But he got in trouble for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That's probably for the best. But uh, yeah, bad guy. I think well, real a real asshole. Two thumbs down. Hmm. Call it you a rap. Thank you.